the sky cracks open as the fabled witch-like carnival begins to unravel at the border of your village. You buy your ticket and wander into the festivities. You find yourself spinning at the wonder and whimsy of the carnival. Golden ribbons scattered throughout the trees, the clouds above turn emerald and swirl like smoke in the wind. You see squirrels having conversations with local villagers and a thousand other things draw your eye. But then, there it is. A giant tent reaches towards the night sky in three swooping peaks topped with spinning golden stars. Painted panels on the tent walls whirl with colourful motion, displaying vibrant circus performances. The sound of music and laughter drifts out through the doors. Take your seat and the lights dim. A quiet murmur falls over the crowd. A second later, a spotlight illuminates a lithe elven figure sitting in a silver hoop, suspended in the centre ring by silk rope that vanishes into the ceiling. Dressed in a dazzling suit of diamond pane mirrors and a pair of butterfly wings. Welcome, one and all, to this evening's extravaganza. I am Mr. Light. Prepare to be delighted. You become lost in a frenzy as your senses are in awe at the wondrous feats of strength by a giant bugbear, a tiefling fire tamer that can summon elementals, and then a merfolk with a voice that soothes a dragon. Then, a small figure, a fairy and a hound slowly walk out as a pair to the middle of the ring. She commands the presence in the room from the first second the spotlight shines on her. Anri, the Wonder Weaver, and her faithful companion, Horace. Her very steps are mesmerizing and she plays a gentle rhythm on a hand drum. With a fey touch wispy eared dog alongside her, a blink dog, no less. Dressed in glamorous blue and grey leathers, a somber storm cloud seems to follow her. With a crack of lightning emerging from her eyes, a scintillating upbeat performance breaks out. The rhythm kicks in with the belt of thunder, and her and the hound perform unbelievable feats. The dog sprouts wings as it flies in sync with her. Spectral arrows emerge as they dance and dodge them. Ethereal dragons chase them through the arena. And flying instruments fill the space with a crescendo of musical mastery. Fairy dragons, every colour of the rainbow, swarm to a synchronised dance. A blur of colour. Some of the audience burst into laughter. Some become mesmerised by the flashing colours. Some appear to be moving in slow motion. And even the moon itself apparates above you. There is no tent anymore, just a miraculous, never-ending night sky. When the performance slowly comes back to just Henri, you regain your senses, and quiet falls once more. With a quaint bow and a final beat of the drum, the spotlight gives way to darkness, but you can still see her, eyes crackling with lightning. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that little introduction for Anri the Wonder Weaver. We haven't done a character creator for a while, so it'll be fun to make a bit of a deal of it and do these little stories beforehand, just so they've got a bit more flavor and more inspiration for yourselves moving forwards. So let's just jump into the actual character creation side of it. Let's see uh, what we've done. So finding Anri the Wonder Weaver here, and we'll go to edit. Fantastic, so you can see I've got some customizing origin on, some homebrew as well, just to make this all pop off perfectly. We have chosen the fairy race, as you may have guessed from the description of her during the little um, uh, the little narration at the start there. A creature type, we are a fey. Size, we are small. Speed, we get a 30 feet walking speed. We get fairy magic as part of being a fairy as well. Because you can cast Druidcraft, then at higher levels, Fairy Fire, and then Enlarge Reduce afterwards. Actually, and as you can see, we have gone for Charisma as our spell casting ability modifier. Uh, that leans in, obviously, towards Sorcerer and Bard, maybe Paladin type classes. Um, spoilers, we have gone for a Bard in this particular case as a Carnival Circus Performer kind of vibe. And we do get Flight as well, which is equal to our walking speed. That'd be 30 feet as long as we're not wearing medium or heavy armor. So, uh, lightly armored, just as a Bard normally would be. What I've done is create a sixth level character. Um, I feel like this would encompass almost the majority of a Wild Beyond the Witch-like campaign. It's meant to guide you from level one to eight or three to eight, depending on how you choose to start. So I think six would be a good thing to like aim for. I thought if I just did a level one or a level three character, you wouldn't really get a lot of flavor for what my idea is here. Um, so I'll just go through with you what I've got. And like I said, level six character. 
So we have unlocked some additional bard spells just from using Tasha's um, optional stuff. Our hit points are a 1d8. Uh, our proficiencies are with the bird pipes, the pan flute, the hand drum, acrobatics, animal handling, and arcana. The instruments themselves, not too much thought went into those. Just thought the ones that sounded cool. What would a fairy in my mind play? Uh, this small fey creature. So I went for the bird pipes, so it was quite cute. Uh, the pan flute, so I always just um, imagine that being nice. And the hand drum, which was actually mentioned in the narration as well. Just something quite small. Acrobatics makes sense, again, being a, like a performer as such animal handling to represent our bond with our blink dog that is in there Horus and our carnival because we're proficient with uh, all things magical the years we've been performing for the carnival itself spellcaster we use our charisma we do have the bardic inspiration features which means we can give a bardic inspiration a d6 or at this level now be a d8 to any creature we can see within 60 feet allowing them to add a said d8 to an ability check attack roll or saving throw so we just influence them with our general charisma and make it easier for them to achieve things so i think this would be probably words of encouragement or just a general glamorous performance you may have seen we have done the college of glamour which we'll get to in a second we also have magical inspiration at the second level if a creature has a bardic inspiration die from you and casts a spell that restores hit points or deals damage the creature can roll that die and choose a target affected by the spell add the number rolled as bonus hit points regained or damage dealt so it just makes things more potent really really good if they don't want to use it for a, a roll and a bitly check or something like that jack of all trades standard bard stuff means we get basically half proficiency with anything we don't have proficiency with super powerful can't express it enough how powerful bards are with that kind of thing we get song of rest so on a short rest we can heal more hit dice basically a bit of flavor there perhaps a song around a campfire something along those lines and like i said for a bard college we have gone for the college of glamour which i think represents the witch like kind of the most very loud full of whimsy and a bit of wonder um, and definitely uh, kind of i think fits perfectly into like a performance aspect of being in a carnival or something like that for our expertise at third level we've gone for performance and acrobatics obviously that makes a ton of sense being a performer in an acrobatic environment as it were we do have a mantle of inspiration which does come from the college of glamour so when we join this at third level we gain the ability to weave a song of fey magic that imbues your allies with vigor and speed and i hope this kind of came across in the narration as well that affected the audience and other creatures that she was performing with as a bonus action you can expend one use of your bardic inspiration to grant yourself a wondrous appearance so this would be the crackling lightning eyes that i mentioned something like that when you do so you choose a number of creatures you can see that you can see within 60 feet of you up to a number equal to your charisma modifier which which is three, four, five, I can't quite remember. Uh, each one of those gains five temporary hit points though. And when a creature gains these temporary hit points, it can immediately use its reaction to move up to its speed without provoking opportunity attacks. Super, super powerful, um, especially at the start of the start of combat, something like that. Those temporary hit points actually have increased to eight at our current level, which is sixth, and they'll inc they increase further as you go up, up to a maximum of 14, which is pretty pretty powerful. Um, but again, this would be something that you could, if you can try and squeeze it in before your DM asks for a roll of initiative, or fingers crossed you're high up in the initiative order and you can get this out early, get pe loads of people into position, or use it as an escape tool as well, whichever way you want to do it, as you pull all the pull all the attention, as it were, or you inspire your friends, however you wanted to flavor it. At third level, we also get enthralling performance, which I hope I portrayed again in the narration at the start and how it affected the audience. If you perform for at least one minute, we can charge our performance with seductive fey magic. You can attempt to inspire wonder in your audience by singing, reciting a poem, dancing, just performing in any capacity, basically. At the end of that performance, you choose a number of humanoids in the 60 feet of you who watched and listened to all of it, up to a number equal to your charisma modifier. Each target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw against your spell save DC or be charmed. While charmed this way, they idolize you, speak glowingly of you, and hinder anyone who opposes you. Although it avoids violence unless it's already inclined to fight on your behalf. This effect ends after one hour. If the target succeeds on the saving throw, it has no idea that you tried to charm it as well. So this is really good if you're just putting on a performance of some description. You'd have to... Um, shoehorn's probably the wrong word. Find opportunities within games to really effectively use this feature, I think that uh, resets on a short or long rest for our ability score improvement level four we've actually not gone for ability score improvement we've gone for a feat instead we've gone for meta magic adept um, i put quite a lot of thought into uh, how to make this character very unique and i think what would what would you need in the kind of environment that she's been working on all these years as part of as, as a witch like hand as working a part of this carnival and i think a bit of sorcery would be fantastic. Obviously, being from the Feywild, we get a bit of just innate magic. Anyway, we're a magical creature, almost. 
I do think things like Twin Spell, for example, which is the sorcery that we've got, and a Quicken Spell sorcery, all of this obviously comes from just being a sorcery. You get loads more options here with sorcery points and things. We've gone for these two. Quicken Spell, so that anything that could be cast in action, we can do as a bonus action instead. So if we need to do something in a whim, I'm thinking as part of a performance, maybe she doesn't want to spend a whole six seconds casting something or something like that and make it really obvious. This would be a more subtle effect, perhaps. Or Twin Spell, if we wanted to target two creatures, make them fly or whatever it might be. I don't have an exact, I guess, use for it, but we could make them laugh, enthrall them with a hypnotic pattern, whatever it might be, we can choose two targets instead. Really, really cool options. I just think it makes sense in this particular environment. At fifth level, we gain Font of Inspiration, standard Bard's stuff, we gain all of our expended uses of our Bardic Inspiration on a shorter long rest, so it's usually it's just long. Fantastic. We do have Counter Charm as well at sixth level. Uh, we gain the ability to use musical notes or words of power to disrupt mind influencing effects. As an action, you can start a performance that lasts to the end of your next turn. During that time, you and any friendly creature within 30 feet, you have advantage on saving throws against being frightened or charmed. So perfect against dragons, uh, vampires. If you know what you're up against, this can be absolutely huge. And at 6th level, which is why we're going up to 6th as well, I wanted to show you some more features of the College of Glamour. Um, something I not didn't know that much about until I kind of read into it using uh, this stuff, the new stuff from Wild Beyond the Witchlight. But the Mantle of Majesty, you get the ability to cloak yourself in a Fey magic that makes others want to serve you. As a bonus action, you cast Command without expending a spell slot. And you can take on an appearance of unearthly beauty for one minute or until your concentration ends. During this time, you can cast Command as a bonus action at each of your turns without expending a spell slot. Any creature charmed by you automatically fails its saving throw against the command you cast with this feature. So you can take your mantle of inspiration, your enthralling performances to charm a f few creatures and then just immediately start just ordering them to do things. Just crazy. Definitely in the future, a lot to think about. I would love to play a bard. So I'll just show you a quick preview of what you can look to get at higher levels as well with, um, with the College of Glamour. If you happen to continue and go all the way up to 14th level, you can permanently gain an otherworldly aspect that makes you look more lovely and fierce. In addition to the bonus, you can assume a magically majestic presence for one minute or until you're incapacitated. For the duration, when every creature tries to attack you for the first time on a turn, they must make a charisma saving throw against your spell save DC and a fail save. It can't attack this turn, or it can't attack you this turn. Just crazy, crazy good. It's like a, a displacer cloak, cloak of displacement. Um, just built into your character really really fun lots of opportunity for good stuff there as well as all the other ridiculous bardic stuff moving over to the ability scores we did go for a roll with a self nerf that i've imposed on it um because i just think it suits the character a little bit better you can see i, I rolled there and um, i think this was like second attempt something like that and um, we've gone for an eight in strength 14 in dexterity 12 in constitution 12 in intelligence 14 in wisdom and 16 into our charisma which is the bread and butter obviously of bardic class and um, charisma and dexterity those things we need the most our strength i don't think we would have much of although obviously being a bard we get half proficiency and everything's so like athletics for in performances and things like that but i think we'd be using acrobatics for the most part with this particular character from our um i guess varied origin as a fae as a fairy we can choose where our ability score increases go i've gone for a double into dexterity and then one into charisma to represent her background as a fae fairy there and for our description, um, obviously we are pulling from straight from Wild Beyond the Witchlight, which is a fantastic book, by the way. I actually had to return mine because I had a small nick in the top, but I did get a bit of a chance to uh, read it. I should have another one soon, fingers crossed. Um, I did have to return it, but the options are crazy good. There's so much flavor and the book just seems incredible. I can't wait to play that campaign. But Witchlight Hand background, so I don't get too distracted. You crept into the Witchlight Carnival as a child or youth and never looked back earning a place among those who work behind the scenes to keep the carnival in business. As a hand, you work hard and party hard. The carnival is born into many fantastic worlds, circling back around to your home world once every eight years. But you know almost nothing about these worlds because you spend all your time in the carnival. You know the other hands well, but the carnival's owners, Mr. Witch and Mr. Light, remain mysterious to you, even after all these years. So that just opens up a lot and it says you know you can have joined from a dismal life at home maybe you're just enchanted by the ideas of visiting new places it's essentially saying now that you're older the carnival's lost a bit of its appeal and that your daily routine is growing a bit tedious the cyclical nature of the carnival's journey has become monotonous it no longer fills your heart with a sense of wonder 
perhaps greater adventures await you beyond the carnival's gates. So it encourages you to open up into the rest of the Feywild and things like that. I think that's fantastic if we say that a Fey creature, I think they have a normal humanoid life lived for like a hundred years basically in this world. Say this character is 45, 50 and they're considering now like I've been doing this for I don't know 30 years or something. They're probably going to want to explore a little bit and see some of these worlds that they pass through because I can imagine it must get quite monotonous as as fantastic as the performances and as famous and loved as Andrew the Wonder Weaver might be, maybe there's more going on behind the scenes with her blink dog that's maybe aging a bit as well. You can play it any way you want. Again, this is all for inspiration and this is something maybe I'll play in the future. Uh, skill fishes we get with that are performance and sleight of hand, which allowed us to take expertise uh, earlier on. And we do get a disguise kit in with there as well. The background feature we get is the carnival fixture, so we can move around the carnival. We're never, we'll never be disrupted. We can get food and drink and things like that. So it's very focused around the carnival, the Witchlight Carnival itself. Oh, and just to top it off, because I did forget, uh, we do speak Sylvan, which is, a, I guess, a, quite a common language in the Feywild, actually. I think satyrs speak it, and some like animated trees, things like that, um, tend to speak uh, Sylvan. It's more of like a, a druidic nature type language. So here's our wonderful character sheet. I've decked it out with all sorts of backgrounds, animated butterfly wings, lots of fun. Um, I really like this theme, to be honest. The background is absolutely awesome. The artwork coming out of this book is crazy, crazy good, as you may have seen at the start. Pulled some from there. As you can see, our proficiencies are bonkers, plus eight in acrobatics with expertise, plus 10 to performance. We can really get away with some crazy, crazy stuff there. Spells wise, uh, we've gone for everything that I think would benefit a performance, not necessarily combat focused or anything like that. Um, so if I was actually playing this character, I'd probably pick a few more options utility wise, a bit of damage maybe thrown in there. But if we're pure role play, these are the spells I've chosen. So we've gone for dancing lights, definitely would need that in the performance druid craft we get as a fairy. Minor illusion why wouldn't we? Press digitation, minor magical effects, perfect for a performance if you want to just wow an audience very easily. Fairy fire, obviously again fairy magic. We've gone for featherfall, perhaps creatures with these butterfly wings can't actually fly but they'll jump off from a great height and we'll catch them with featherfall. Could be the blink dog to be fell though they can teleport so I'm sure it'd be fine. Uh, Tasha's hideous laughter, a very famous spell and perfect for trying to enthrall an audience um, and I guess create that sense of craziness from a performance where some people are hypnotized by spells like hypnotic pattern others are laughing hideously in this in this case uh, we have a large reduce as well from fairy magic uh, we're going for whole person which you could i'm thinking of almost like a pantomime performance where perhaps she just stops something straight in their tracks with just pure sheer will and they like willingly fail the saving throw something like that invisibility could be fantastic for getting around the arena should you need to creating cool magical effects to wow the audience mirror image to create duplicates of yourselves that could be really really crazy i'm thinking of like agility from pokemon where like 10 appear or something like that could be really fun feign death is a bit more of a i guess would be like a magician's routine um slowing your pulse down to it where you appear dead and we can bring them back to life or something would make for a good performance i feel uh, hypnotic pattern as i mentioned earlier just crazy twisting patterns and colors to mesmerize an audience major image is just a better minor illusion i guess we can create a 20 foot cube of illusion which is way bigger than you think that could be anything like the dragon mentioned in the narration something like that and then we have slow. Imagine if you saw a performance where things just seem to be moving in slow motion. Could be really, really cool. Awesome. So moving away from there, we're going to go over to some magic items, some pulled straight from the new book as well. As with this first one, a red chromatic rose. While a red rose is held, it's wreathed in fire as a harmless visual effect. While holding the rose by its stem, you gain resistance to fire damage. If you take more than 10 fire damage from a single source after applying resistance, the rose disintegrates and you take no damage instead. As an action, you can blow petals from the road to produce a 20-foot cone of fire. DC 15 con save or 3d10 fire damage. Using it destroys the rose. So this could be something maybe you could buy. A small magical item from the carnival itself. Probably need to be approved and be of a responsible age, I would imagine. Um, but really fun and again, great for a performance. You imagine seeing that, a magic trick like that where you blow a rose and it turns into a, a swath of fire or something like that. Just really, really nice and a fun item from the new book as well. Or give it a mention. We've got Pixie Dust also from Wild Beyond the Witchlight. As an action, you can sprinkle this dust on yourself or another creature. You can see within five feet of you, the recipient gains a flying speed of 30 feet. Perhaps this is what we use to give our Blink Dog a flying speed during performances. They can hover for one minute, and if they're airborne, they fall safely to the ground. I imagine these are things we could easily pick up uh, by the time we're level six in this particular journey. 
So to get around wearing medium or heavy armor, um, I did have kind of a brainwave of what would be a fantastic item for a bard who generally they do kind of struggle with their AC a lot of the time. Um, we could make a really, really effective one by maybe coming across a barrier tattoo. Now this is something I think if I run Wild Beyond the Witchlight, I'll be adding a, a tattoo parlor shop to the carnival itself. I just think it's just a fantastic idea where you could get these crazy tattoos that are pulled from the air, like these spectral dragons or however you want to flavor it. But these um, tattoo items that came, I think it's in Tasha's, are just, they're all so much fun, loads of flavor. It's produced by a special needle, and perhaps Anri, having worked in the uh, carnival for so long, maybe she got a favor with the tattoo artist there, and they would do this for free or however you want to flavor it again, but a fantastic item for a bard scene is they can't usually wear decent armor. This sets our AC to 15 plus our dex modifier, which is absolutely crazy um, and a way to get around having to wear armor. Barrier tattoo, absolutely awesome. A rare variation, which might be a bit of a stretch at level six, to be fair. You could get lucky. Next up, we have just a rapier was plus one. Um, we have to be effective in combat. Should we need to, should we act spells not be enough to fend off something? Um, a rapier plus one just in the back pocket, just in case. And then we have the rhythm maker's drum as our, I guess, our bardic instrument. Uh, while holding this drum, we get a plus one bonus to spell attack rolls, which we're not using any of, unfortunately, um, but also to the saving throw DCs, which is really, really powerful. Any plus to your spell save DC is a huge positive as a primary spellcaster. So yeah, that would be fantastic. And as an action, we can play this drum to regain one use of Bardic Inspiration. Really fun. And the Barry Tattoo and the Rhythm Maker's Drum are both attunable in this case as well. That is it for today. I hope you enjoyed this little character creation uh, using all the tools available in Wild Beyond the Witchlight. I'm probably going to do one more of these uh, using the Harringon. I think we're going to go for a Warlock of the Archfey just because that sounds like a lot of fun seeing as Fey play a huge role in the Fey world. Shocking, I know. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. And I just want to say apologies for not getting as many videos out recently. I've been a little bit burnt out after doing two videos a week for however long before. I do have a full-time job as well. Um, it's, it's been a bit tough recently um, but I'll try and get back to a consistent schedule maybe one or two uploads a week and I'm still working through the huge list of Legend Forge creations that we're trying to get through but yeah thank you for all the support like I said like comment and subscribe if you're not already if you enjoyed this video I really appreciate the support and I will see you in the next one bye, -bye.